So I'm out in my backyard. I'm gonna do a little backyard plein air today. I'm gonna to paint these roses and I've got a little six by eight panel. Just gonna experiment with some colors on this gray day. Composition wise, I'm thinking something, maybe something like this. So I'm gonna mix the color for the bushes in the background first. Ultramarine and burnt sienna. Now you can see this is really dark and today's a gray day so the values, are, there's not a lot of really strong darks. So I'm gonna to try to paint within a fairly narrow value range. So I'm gonna lighten this up quite a bit. Now I know my palette um, is about a mid-tone gray um, so you could see this would be like mid-tone, this would be really, this would be like the darkest dark I have. I mean, I've obviously added some white to it, but before I added white to it, it's about as dark as I can get with this paint. So, all right, I'm holding this up now and it's, it's, it needs to be warmer. I could put out some fresh paint too. So by adding yellow, I'm going to warm it up, but I'm also going to lighten the value of it. So that's a little bit darker than mid-tone. So I'm gonna use that as my background color. I'm now gonna mix some of the other colors to see how they compare on my palette. So this is cadmium yellow medium and ultramarine blue. All right, so this mid-tone really warm green here is kind of what I'm seeing in the, in the plants in the foreground. I mean, obviously there are variations, but that's a, this is a really good starting point. So I'm gonna mix up a bunch of this. Okay, and then the flowers, let's go with the red flowers first. See how close I get with these. This is cadmium red light and alizarin crimson. Okay, that's kind of close right there. That's close enough for the red roses. And then there's the pink ones. So that's cad red light and some white. Boy, that's spot on. I don't even have to do anything with that. <laughs> and then I'm gonna look, I'm gonna compare the values. Like if I look at the flowers, I'm gonna compare the values and say, okay, is this, you know, how do the values of the red, the red is definitely a darker value than the, the pink flowers. So I want to see here on the palette how they compare as well. Now I'm going to need some of this thalo blue because I want to mix the color for the shutters. I think this yellow might be too warm. Maybe not. Well, that looks pretty good right there. All right, so my battery died during the painting process. And to be honest, I was kind of struggling, uh, mostly with doing the architecture of the window behind the flowers. Uh, it was really kind of difficult to get that accurate, especially because the panel is so small. I kind of knew that was gonna be a problem. But anyway, I think I got pretty good uh, color, sort of subtle, which is what you get on a gray day. For this photograph, I cropped off part of the top. There just seemed to be too much window and, um, the dark space on the right hand side. There was too much of that. Uh, so I think cropped, it looks okay. And uh, mostly this was just an experiment to see if I mixed color as accurately as possible. Um, how that would read once I got the painting inside. The thing that I noticed is I was mixing up, you know, I pre-mixed colors and then I held up my palette knife and I would, you know, compare to the colors in the scene. And I was really, you know, I, I didn't settle for just like close enough. I was going for almost an exact match. 
And what I found is, is that I still had to punch up those colors because when I rolled back like six feet from the panel, it just looked, it didn't look like the scene. In my experience, you have to modify the color to make it work as a painting to actually look like the scene. It's not like you could just take all the colors that you see exactly, bring them over onto your panel and it's gonna look, uh, do you know what I'm saying? That's been my experience. If you've had a different experience, that's cool. But like I said, when I bring those inside, they just look dead. And I've seen paintings before that I've seen on Instagram where I'm like, wow, that looks incredible. I'm not naming any names here. And then I'll see the painting in real life and it just looks flat. And then there's others that I've seen that have looked where I felt like the color was too much, you know, on Instagram. And then I went and saw the show and I was blown away. I was like, wow, this really works. That's a kind of a difficult thing because most of how we share our work is through Instagram. Um, fortunately, when I send my paintings off, um, and I just sent one off just this last week, uh, two actually, um, I always get positive feedback regarding the color of the painting in, in person. So I do push my colors, but I want them to be, I want it to be to the point where the person gets the painting and they're actually really pleased with it. So no false advertising. Uh, but anyway, so this was a fun experiment. But again, the takeaway from me is that if you mix colors super accurately, like using your palette knife, holding it up, matching it as carefully as possible, you still got to modify. You've got to push the warmth. You maybe got to push a little bit of contrast. Um, but overall, I think this was a really fun experiment. And I, I plan on doing this more as well. Um, I don't usually paint flowers, but, um, you know, here we are. <laughs> I'm maybe painting more things on my property. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.